Hello, hello! Perfidious Pete here with some more soulful singing of dire dirges down in the haunted hollows and misty mires of Perfidious Manor in Darkest Dungeon. And last episode featured a few dire dirges indeed, as our new jester Hopfrog windmilled furiously at his lyre in an effort to wow the crowds of pigmen down in a weald. Unfortunately for Hopfrog, though, He's no Pete Townsend, and the mutated hog beasts crawling the dungeon aren't nearly as easily impressed as the drunken soccer hooligans at Wembley Stadium. And as a result, Hopfog's performance didn't just get him booed off stage, it got him a beating savage enough that even one of those soccer hooligans would have said, Oi mate, I think this bloke's had enough. I mean, they would have shown mercy. The pigmen, not so much. The hooligans, they'd have cut him some slack, but... Uh, Hopfrog did manage to survive the engagement despite his unbelievably savage beating. It's going to be several weeks before he's ready to return to the stage, though. He's got a little case of the stage fright and some uh, performance anxiety issues to work through, so I think we'll uh, just leave him to that and head down to the embarkation point instead and see if we can't book someone to fill in for Hopfrog in the meantime. I mean, Zane Malik is probably available, right? I mean... Also, probably considerably cheaper now as well, since he's out of One Direction. I gotta assume the Zane Malik demand has diminished significantly. A Berserk Mask, we already have one of, and I don't really like it. Let's see what else we've got. We are looking at sort of mid-range missions here. We would like to get Ron, Katniss, Bruinor. Oh, we know what? We don't have a healer for that team. Florence Nightingale is out of action. Um, What kind of team can we put together? I guess we should... Wow, looks like we're going to have to pull out the big boys. Uh, rank 5s. All right, well, let's start looking at rank 5 dungeons. That, the Martyr Seal, is real bad. Suncloak is okay. What are you? Man at Arm. We already have one of those. And we're looking for busts more than anything else. The Martyr Seal, it's so bad, but this is a medium to explore 90% of rooms. We might do that for three busts. Yeah, as strange as that sounds, I think we're actually going to do this mission because we want the busts. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, let's put together a team, and I think Candy J definitely needs to be a part of that team. We got to adjust Candy's trinkets a little bit, though. We have more ass-beating trinkets for Candy, and we got to make sure that she's ready to beat as much ass as possible. So let's get rid of these. I really would like to see something in the new patches where you can just, like, click these and make them go away. You don't have to drag them out. You can just click them off. That would be a fantastic... Just kind of a minimalist improvement thing that you could do that would have uh, great benefits. All right, so we're giving up accuracy and we're giving up speed, but we can counter the accuracy bonus here. We would take a slight penalty to dodge and a small penalty to damage. Overall, these two things complement each other very well, except for the dodge bonus, which is suboptimal, admittedly. But we are getting bonus damage. We have 7.5% bonus crit, which is a ton. Damage is up too. I kind of like this combination. I think we roll with it. I'm pretty sure Candy Jade is going to be strong with this configuration. And if nothing else, we can always revert this at a later date. So for now, let's try this, test it out, see how well it works. And if it sucks, we'll get rid of it. All right, what else have we got here? So we're going to take Candy and Jade. I think we'll take Deckard. It's been a while since we've had Deckard out. Let's check Deckard's trinkets. Oh, Deckard's. Yeah, he's real good. All right. Let's make sure none of these changed. Nope, Deckard is cool. We could give Deckard 5% crit. Now, you know what? I like to trap this arm. It actually puts his traps at 120%, which means he almost can't fail. And let's do... Oh, I really want to take Katniss Everdeen on this. Katniss is a little behind Ron Weasley in the experience department. Bruinor is actually furthest behind. Katniss is a little bit behind Florence. Yeah, you know what? This is fine. We'll bring Catless. Catless? Be advised, folks. Katniss Everdeen fucking hates cats. She's known as Catless Everdeen because she murders every cat that she sees. Oh, here comes old Catless Everdeen, they'd say. Take your animals and get them indoors. She will not abide the presence of a feline. Catless Everdeen. I wonder if that's uh, like a rejected name for Katniss Everdeen. If they were like, you know, what if we call her Catless? And then the, the writer was like, ah, no, it just it doesn't have to. Katniss. Yeah, that's it. Katniss Everdeen. That's not at all a contrived name. Couldn't her name just been like Sue? Uh, anyway, we're ready. Let's go provision. We're doing this mission, even though the trinket is shit. Worst case scenario, we already have a Martyr's trinket. I think we can just sell it. We're going to take a pretty big abundance of food here. 24 food. We only have one camp. That's going to take eight. You know, that's probably enough, actually. Four shovels, of course. 
torches, we're going to bring a whole slew of torches. For a medium mission, I'm going to actually bring 18 torches. New torch meta is all of the torches all the time. That's the new meta. You want to have as much light as possible because the dark is truly quite dangerous. The night is dark and full of terrors, especially when you're down in the dungeon. Of course, torches, I guess, could be a sacrament to Relore, and then we'd all have to burn someone at the stake. Wait, maybe that's maybe we should rethink that whole religion bit there, huh? Maybe burning people at the stake isn't the answer. I mean, I'm spitballing here, but what if burning people at the stake isn't the answer? So, how could we do this to minimize backtracking? If we go in this pattern, we actually will only be backtracking a single room. We're skipping these two rooms. Uh, you know, yeah, I think that works. Let's go with that route. That We could also alternatively go here and up and over and then... Now nah, it's not going to work because I'm going to be skipping three rooms. All right. So Dorian Gray, as usual, he is immortal because uh, as long as the portrait exists, he is immune to all forms of harm, corruption, disease, pollution, any of that shit. So we're going to have him opening anything that's possibly dangerous. Very unfortunate amounts of both... Why did Katniss Everdeen get a bunch of stress? What did Katniss do to deserve that? She didn't get hit by the trap. What's up with that, dungeon? Huh? Huh? Are you trying to pull some fast bullshit on me? I'm, I'm fucking... This is some Windows 10-style shenanigans right here. I'm not having any of this. All right, so up we go again. I'm on to you scanning my emails and whatnot. Windows operating system to... Make sure you can market to me correctly. You know, I don't really care if you uh, market to me correctly so much as you just don't read my emails. There's a lot of shit in there the world really should not see. And uh, I would prefer that it remain that way. You're a mark ability, right? Yeah. So we're going to mark this guy just in the hopes that Katniss will be able to kill him. It's also, of course, extra damage and such. You know what? Screw that. Destroyed. We don't need to wait for Katniss. Let's just straight up murder him. Why, why dilly dally? Why wait? When we've got Candy Jade there ready with her halberd to deliver the damage, Let's just do the damage. There's no point in mucking about. Rick Deckard with some solid work. Man, I've missed bounty hunters. You know, in the new patch, bounty hunters actually have some abilities that we probably should have considered and didn't consider. Bounty hunters are pretty good now. They have one ability, I think, that just clears corpses, which has a lot of potential for us. Hellions are so good now. So good. We don't really need these crafts, actually. I'm going to throw those on the floor. Speaking of which, Deckard, don't you have, uh, don't you have the ability that burns corpses now? We can slice. I thought uh, I thought this ability also cleared all corpses. I thought flashbang cleared corpses now. Maybe I was smoking dope, crack, or high for five minutes, but I swear in the patch notes it said that flashbang actually got rid of corpses now. All right, who has a quirk that we want to get rid of? Or rather, uh, no, you're actually eh, backtracker is not that great. Some of those are pretty good. Okay, most of Dorian Gray's quirks are actually kind of shitty. So let's see if we can swap one out. I'll take a swing in the confession booth. Well, Dorian's history of sin is pretty extensive, I got to admit. Too much to bear? Probably not. Dorian Gray sort of reveled in his decadence. But uh, I guess yeah, I can see where he might feel at least a modicum of guilt and or shame over his actions. Maybe, maybe a little bit. I mean, he did only pick up like 20% of what he can actually bear, so... Probably appropriate levels. We're going to just straight up burn that torch. That's fine. We don't need to build another stack. We're in good shape. 88 light. As long as we can go in here above 75, I'm comfortable with it. But I do like keeping my light above 75 at all times now. We have not yet found a fight. And I find this entirely agreeable, actually. Check out the box. What's in the box? Great. It does not contain Gwyneth Paltrow's head. One day, though. One day. I'm telling you. One fine, bright, and shiny day. Michelle Pfeiffer and George Clooney are going to make a really shitty movie called One Fine Day. But other bright, shiny, and fine day, we will open one of those boxes, and inside will be the head of Gwyneth Paltrow. After I say, what's in the box? What's in the box? And then there, it'll be a head. And then I'll be like, you know, I've said it a number of times, but now that it actually happened, I don't really feel good about it. So it'll be weird, and I'll be uncomfortable, and I'm ugh, just shuffle back. This does put Katniss Everdeen in a very unpleasant spot. And that she's much further forward than I would care for. Little tempting goblet. Katniss's stress continues to climb. We may have to go for a little bit of suppression here from Katniss. Or we could have Katniss. You know what? Let's just reposition Katniss. Back to the back. We got a little unlucky with the... Uh, little unlucky with the surprise. Let's go for the flashbang. 
Resisted, of course. We did get the stun. Honestly, I wanted the shuffle, not the stun. Thanks for never giving me what I want. I appreciate it, Darkest Dungeon. Uh, never give them what they want. That's, uh, that's the rule. Never give them what they want. Always leave them wanting more, sure. But also, never give them what they want. So they're wanting more because you didn't give them what they came for in the first place. It's really a recipe for unmitigated success. You know what's not a recipe for unmitigated success? That fucking dodge. That's what. Alright, let's just get to work here. We are... We're sucking high tit, is what we're doing. High tit? We're sucking hind tit. I guess, well, I mean... I suppose if someone had particularly perky breast, you could also suck high tit, but... I think sucking hind tit is actually the, uh... Is the phrase. We're getting fucking wrecked. By... Just trash. We're getting wrecked by trash mobs. You guys, you gotta start pulling your shit together. What's going on here? I thought we were falling in love, but it turns out we're just falling apart. Um, I think we may be experiencing a total eclipse of the heart here, folks. And you need to turn that shit around, Bright Eyes. Alright, so Deckard with a solid palpable hit and a kill. That's good. Let's get... We can't bleed with this attack. Unfortunately, the skeleton will not bleed, but 13 damage on slot 3 is still acceptable. Little bump in the night for Brienne. We gotta go for more healing. Alright, so that's got Brienne topped off. No, not quite. Actually, Brienne has quite a bit of health. 46 health is a pretty good total for her. If Katniss goes next, we're going to shoot this guy. I was going to say, if somebody else goes next, we're going to try and focus on healing. But uh, Katniss was indeed next. And Deckard with a big critical to close things out for us. That's fine. We're a little bunged up. Solid loot, though. We don't need these portraits, so we'll just throw those on the floor. I'm going to be very aggressive about getting rid of any trinket that is not immediately useful for us. Anything that we don't want immediately, just so I don't forget and accidentally carry some around, busts are the only thing we need. And anything we pick up that is not a bust is going on the floor right away. Because otherwise I'm going to forget and I'm going to wander up taking up valuable inventory that could have been bust with something that isn't bust. That trap was a little unfortunate. Oh, okay. Whew. I was a little worried that somebody was going to freak out and slam themselves inside an Iron Maiden because we do have a number of people who have Dachnomania and would love to get in this bad boy. Fortunately, none of them are with us today. And instead, we get less gold than we paid for the item to activate it. Brilliant. 95 light, though, so things are looking good in a torch department. We have had surprisingly few, uh, surprisingly few fights. Shockingly few fights, in fact, considering the new meta of the dungeon. I'm not aware that they pushed a hot patch or anything that would have lowered that. All right, Deckard, Trap, this is you. You literally can't fail, so that's just free stress relief. I kind of like that meta for uh, our bounty hunter, just having them be incapable of failing. Okay, so we got a map. But be incapable of failing at the trap resistance because literally if you have that working for you, it is just free stress relief anytime you scout and can find a trap. 90 light is probably high enough. We are going to have a fight in here. And we have to do three more rooms. So we have the potential for like a dozen more fights. All things considered, it's unlikely. But seeing five fights out of this would not be... With the new higher propensity for hallway fights, seeing five fights between here and the end of the dungeon would not at all be out of the question. And we're going to get at least two here. I think we burned two torches. The match is struck. A blazing Fortunately, the ruins has been pretty kind to us. We're just getting sort of some unremarkable battles with uh, some of these bone characters. No bone generals or anything truly devastating. I'm going to do this. Breakthrough doing some solid aggregate damage right there. A little bit of coral. Okay, so Katniss is a little banged up. Could use some heals. Deckard's still looking strong. Taking nine damage, though. That's a little more than we would have liked. Katniss fires back, comes up short. Man, this guy has really high protection. No, he has no protection. Seems like maybe he should have uh, been a little more harmed by that. Bringing him to the front is quite good, however. These guys can still graveyard slash, huh? All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to break through again, actually. Oh, that was unfortunate, because that's a huge damage debuff, and we got nothing at all out of it. All right, so we're going to throw some heals at Deckard. He is really torn up. Um, just kill what you can kill, Deckard. Probably we could have not killed the stun guy. That was stupid. My stun meta is bad. I don't often stun things. I was actually more interested in the shuffle there, which we did get, bringing him to the front. But still, I don't necessarily play stuns correctly because I don't use stuns. I would vastly prefer that an enemy just be dead as to be lingering around stun for 100 turns. Dead is better. Unless you're watching, of course, well, no, even if you're watching Pet Cemetery, sometimes dead is better. Speaking of dead, the guy who delivered that line, also dead. So, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure he necessarily agrees with the sometimes dead is better assessment now. What do you think of that, fucking Herman Munster? Huh? Huh? How's it feel to be dead? I mean, it probably doesn't really feel like much of anything at all because you're fucking dead. It's literally incapable of feeling anything. That's kind of the definition of the term. Let's just, uh, there you go. I do like finish him. It has good wide range of targets. Finish him is a solid ability. We're doing pretty fine on gold, too. Sapphires, we got two. That's two grand right there. That's, uh, I'll take it. That's, that's not an insignificant amount of cash. I mean, we could, uh, we could put Hot Frog, we could get him some music lessons with, oh, this is gonna be ugly. Right, these guys have a very high protection stat. Alright, so we go, we want this back rank killed as quickly as possible. So we go for the Abyssal Artillery. We got an Iron Swan. Oh, the str come on, man. We need those hits, Candy. The stress is getting pretty out of control. All right. Not enough damage. Damn it. We also need some heals, which means we need these guys to be dead because these guys hit pretty fucking hard now. These bone shield walls, they're no joke. Uh, you know, let's see if we can shuffle you to the front. If we could shuffle this guy to the front. Oh, beautiful. All right, so we got the stun. I'm surprised that the stun is working as often as it is. Shuffling him to the front is going to be good. The 14 damage critical, vastly less good. A suppression would not go amiss here. If we could get a suppression off, that would be a fine thing. Um, just collect bounty on that guy. Good solid hit from Decker. All right, you got it. You got to hit this one, Jade. All right, good. So Candy Jade taking out the stress enemy, getting a little stress relief for herself. That's a positive thing. We got to start pumping out the heals. I don't like exclusively using Katniss in a healing fashion because her damage is quite good, but uh, we don't really have any choice. We got too many people who are injured. And her buff, coupled up with the Occultist heal, really does pull remarkable totals. An extra 25% healing from each of those weird reconstructions, it does add up pretty damn quick. If uh, we get any kind of solid healing out of the Occultist at all, it really piles up the extra 25%. And you can stack this buff as well. It's actually an extra third damage, so... The protection is going to take us a bit to chew through, and unfortunately, these guys don't bleed, which is yet another problem for units that are... I mean, arguably, this is the case for having a Blight person in your party. You would want to bring Blight into the blight into the ruins, and then you'd want to bring Bleeds into the wield. Ideally. Six damage, though. You know, at six damage at a time, I kind of think you're better off... If you're going six damage a swing, which is, granted, kind of unremarkable, but with that sort of damage output, uh, there's a monstrous heal. It's almost break even versus the dot, once you consider the fact that these guys, even, let's say we had Blight. These guys, their Blight resistance, 55%. So roughly a quarter of the time, at best, your Blight simply isn't going to work. The Blight attack also is just going to do zero damage. So to even get six damage, it takes, theoretically, at least two turns of a ticking dot. This guy has only been alive for, what, four turns? So just hitting him for six damage over four turns in aggregate is actually more damage. All right, well, you're fine for now, Katniss. Throw a little heal there. We got to get to some more healing on the bounty hunter. He is not doing that well. Also, it's important to note that Candy Jade is going to do... She's at her least effective. This is the least effective she could be against high protection, unbleedable units. This is literally the worst it's going to get. You'll note that our bounty hunter is actually still doing pretty recent, pretty reasonable damage here. All right, so not as much healing as we would have liked, but probably enough to get us through the fight. Look, axe blade, more clumsy axe blade. One of the corpses has rotted. Actually, that would have been a good time to test whether or not we can actually disintegrate a corpse. There's the critical, and that's going to be the big real difference maker right there. Criticals, the zero point heal is lovely. Criticals are what make the weapon based classes still vastly superior to the dot classes. It's really mostly about the criticals. And they say dots can critical now, but you know what? And probably, uh, granted, I don't use a whole lot of dots, but I have not yet seen a dot critical. Not a single dot critical. And given the bonus damage that you get from a non-dot criticling, I'm not really sure stacking up dots and trying to get him to critical is a viable strategy at all. We're really going to go crazy on the healing here. So Brienne is going to be, by the time we're done, she's going to be pumped back up to full. We do have this unit marked, so we're going to do extra damage with any kind of attack that hits it. 
a four point weird reconstruction with plus 66% heal received. So that healed for like two. And that guy undid it all with one swing and pushed us further back. That's not at all irritating. So this fight's just going to take a while. The nice thing is we're not really in any danger. I mean, this is an irritating fight, but it's not a dangerous fight. Three damage from the sacrificial stab from Dorian Gray. And it's just, uh, we can't shoot this guy, actually. Well, I guess we'll just uh, keep stacking up the heals. Katniss Everdeen is definitely holding it down in the heal department. She's criticaling all over the place. The dead weight. Actually, I wouldn't mind him getting pushed back. So, of course, he resisted. The critical is fucking terrible. All right, Brienne. Can you do... Uh, you... You could break through for effectively zero damage and give yourself a debuff. Probably not worth it, all things considered. Rick Deckard continuing to wail away at them as though they were a replicant and he were on the hunt. You go get him, Deckard. If only you had your little blaster pistol thingy, I have to assume this would be going much, much more quickly. More dead weight. Push back and stun. You know what? It doesn't matter, dude. Deckard is just going to cleave your head in twain. There's nothing you can do about it. You're, you're all the done. More healing then. I guess we'll throw that one on Brienne. And like I said, man, Katniss Everdeen is really holding it down. I'd love to have her doing damage, but she can't hit this target anyway. She has nothing that attacks the first slot. So it's up to Deckard to finish it off. Deckard getting it done. A very, very, very long fight. Which kind of brings me back to one of my sort of subtle pro... Oh, no, we don't want that. One of my sort of subtle complaints about the most recent update. Games take a real long time now, a real long time. And one of the things I really enjoyed about Darkest Dungeon is that it didn't necessarily take a hundred years to play a game. You could come in, sit down 20, 25 minutes. You could get a round in, go through a week in a dungeon. And now dungeon crawls are getting longer and longer and longer. I mean, we're in this, what, like 20 minutes though so far already? And this is a medium dungeon and we're not finished. And I have to assume that most of the fighting is also still in front of us since we've had pretty minimal combat so far. I mean, we're 20 minutes into this one. It's a medium, medium length dungeon. Granted, it is the highest level, but this is a medium length dungeon, and uh, we're we're maybe not even halfway finished. The new protection stats, lowering the troopers' abilities for damage, all these things make for a longer game. Which wasn't. I mean, like I said, picking up a ruins explorer. Okay, well that's yeah. You know, we're in the ruins, so I suppose it's useful. Burn some torches, remax our torch light. High torch meta is solid torch meta. At some point, I'm going to have to try a dark run, but so far, at some point, I do have to try one. But I do want to point out the one time I have fought in the dark since the patch, people got killed. We lost Simkin. The one time we did it, Simkin got killed. I'm not pleased with the amount of resistance these guys seem to show to the debuff. It is definitely worth marking this guy. His protection is very high. Uh, that's a good dodge from Dorian Gray, because he's in a little bit of trouble stress-wise. We are going to need to try and camp and get some of that stress reduced. Ground Pound is going to be a very significant problem. It does a lot of damage. We got to kill the stress. We got to kill the stress units, though. We still have to prioritize the stress units as dangerous as Ground Pound is. This is why. <sighs> this fight may be unwinnable, actually. Katniss Everdeen is just getting shattered. We gotta keep cranking out the heals. This guy is gonna be no joke. Every time he ground pounds, we're gonna be in for some serious trouble. We gotta... Come on, we got... This debuff needs a better... We need a... You know what we need to do is get a trinket that increases Katniss's debuff chance. We really need a plus debuff trinket for Katniss. Some big criticals would not go awry here, Deckard. That's a ton of aggregate damage. That's 27 aggregate damage from a single swing. That's like three turns of healing with everyone who can heal. And this guy does... The back-to-back -back ground pounding is bullshit. Absolute bullshit. We're gonna have the whole world on death's door after the next time he does that. The constant criticals also are not fucking helping. We're in maximum light. We have the, the monsters have the least possible chance they can ever have to critical. And this guy is just completely ruining us. His next ground pound puts like three people on death's door. I don't know how we could have chewed through him any faster. Actually, dots would be working him over slower than our bounty hunter. These guys hit so fucking hard now. 
Uh, this is it's it's a little ridiculous. It's a little ridiculous. All right, so now all we have is just this guy who's gonna do nothing. This is all he's gonna do. He's just gonna ground pound, ground pound, ground pound, ground pound until everyone is dead. On the plus side, at least he doesn't have any bleeds. Although if we get unlucky and one of our units gets a bleed on him, we could be in deep shit. Katniss is still on death's door. If this guy beats us on a speed roll and ground pounds, which he's gonna do because he doesn't do anything else. We could lose Katniss Everdeen here, and if we do, I'm gonna be extremely salty. One of our healers needs to go. You gotta get Katniss off death's door, and we absolutely have to camp after this fight. Look at this shit. I, I would tempt, I'm tempted to give him penalties, but I gotta say, with the penalties, it's it's not really gonna help us. You know what, mark for, I would actually rather have you mark than heal here, Katniss. If you can mark and Deckard can get in one good shot, we got a chance to take him out before he ground pounds again. It's a poor chance, but it is a chance. Also, you could actually maybe take him out yourself. Nope. He's badly injured. Oh, there we go. Uh, ridiculous. An absolutely ridiculous fight. And what did we get? A healing armlet, which is pretty much garbage. Uh, I want the... No, I need the busts. Katniss is bleeding. We'll use our bandage. Busts are the only thing I care about, and we're going to camp. We have to camp, in fact. We don't really have a choice. Alright, so some stress relief. We gotta focus on buffs where we can. Scout ahead. This is how we do it. 10% accuracy plus 5%. You know, I think we might be better off to go for some stress relief. Now, on the plus side, Dorian Gray does have some things that will get rid of a bunch of stress all at once. So he can dump 25 of his own stress. Dark strength is pretty good. It also only takes two time. I think we dark strength. We should probably also sharpen our spear. 10% crit is worth two time. That leaves us, what, four? All right, so she could reject the gods. That would wipe out Candy Jade's stress. I'm not, she could also revel. Eh, probably not overall worth it. Let's, who is highest? We got multiple people who are in very serious stress difficulties. It looks like Katniss and Dorian are both going to have to go in for stress relief after the end of this one, and now we got to rest. All of that... You know, I'm, I'm a little salty. I've, the critical rate for monsters seems high. Considering the fact... And it doesn't seem high because from a damage standpoint, because the damage from the increased monsters critical, while irritating, is actually... I mean, you can deal with it. You can handle it if you have to. We're not going to have to fight anymore, which is good. But you can't handle the damage. It's not really the damage that's a problem. It's the stress. The stress really is the problem. We want Katniss Everdeen to use the Altar of Light. That's the damage buff. I was hoping that was the stress relief. It was not. I always mix up the Altar of Light and a Holy Altar. I'm never going to get those right. I will never remember what those two things actually do. But back to my point with the monster critical thing. Since they reduced players' ability to heal their own stress with criticals, and they have increased monsters' number of criticals and also increased just the amount of raw stress that you take from being critical and just in general. Monsters having criticals anything but high light, you're gonna... The stress is gonna be almost insurmountable. I'm almost uncertain how one would do a dark run now, Finding other than just be willing to accept stress. the fact that at the end of basically every run, home. the entire team was gonna have to go out for stress relief, and you would probably be suffering penalties for the entire fight. Like, you would not get a... You would get a... I don't remember what they're called, an affliction, I think, when your trooper freaks out and doesn't get a virtue. It's virtues and afflictions, whatever. You almost have to be willing to accept the fact that you'd be fighting at least part of the dungeon with an affliction. Or, alternatively, you'd have to take a dedicated stress reduction unit like the Houndmaster and have him geared specifically for stress reduction or possibly a Jester geared specifically for stress reduction. The problem then is you're going to have just more rounds of combat because all in all, you're doing less damage. I am pleased that we hauled 24 busts out of this dungeon. All right, let's take our medicine. Uh-huh. This needs to be fixed. It really, this post-mission, it's just like every time you complete a mission, every single success gets rewarded with a kick in the balls. That is really how this fucking feels. We got unyielding, which is not terrible, although it replaced tough, so arguably it's a wash. Tough leaves you less likely to be on death's door. Unyielding makes you less likely to die from it. Now, granted, Hyromania and Necromania are not... 
They're not crippling quirks, but Tapeworm is also not crippling. But these are all things that have to be repaired. All of that stuff takes a non-zero amount of time, which means fewer troopers available for missions at all times. Also, less overall income because you're spending all of your time doing this. They're, they need to adjust the number of positive quirks to diseases to negative quirk ratio. Because right now, if I could just skip that screen altogether, I would do it every single time. I would forego any chance at a positive quirk for successfully completing a mission just to avoid the punishment. That's, and it, the fact that that exists, yeah. It, it should not work in a fashion where it, it actually, actively, the player is not glad to have completed a mission. It's like our troopers never learn anything from being in a dungeon. They never, a successful run is never beneficial for them. It's only just additional punishment. They never learn anything. They never get better. Going into the dungeon has no benefits at all. It's only a grinding, a slow grinding down. Which maybe, I don't know, maybe it's what they're looking for. But I gotta say, it, it feels a lot less fun. It does feel a lot less fun. Alright, so we gotta cure everyone who went on the mission because they succeeded. And their punishment for success is that you have to go to the sanitarium. So you're faithless and you have deviant taste, neither of which is a problem. Lazy eye, necromania, honestly. I do want to get, uh, you know, there are probably other things I would vastly prefer to get rid of. So, Brienne, let's give her a pass. Who was our healer on this mission? We took Dorian Gray. Did you pick up anything terrible, Dorian? You're calm, which is bad. Demonomania, bloodthirsty. Actually, calm is real shitty. We need to get rid of calm. The first round is one of the few rounds that you can reliably count on your occultist to be doing damage. So that's got to go in. So that's two weeks down for Dorian Gray. And we had... Who got diseased? It wasn't Candy. We didn't take half cock Jack. It was Deckard. Deckard got something? No. You have anything that needs to be dealt with, Deckard? Nope, you're just a gambler. Good. So who was the... Oh, it was Katniss Everdeen. Katniss needs to go in. Actually, Katniss needs both stress relief and we got to get rid of Katniss's tapeworm. Tapeworm is actually kind of crippling. That's got to go. All right. Hot Frog is going to need stress relief. Do you have anything else? All right. Just stress relief for Hot Frog. Burrick, what about you? You're good. All right. So somebody else has got to have a disease that we need to get rid of. Let's figure out who that person is and get them into the medical ward. Bien, Karen. Somebody's got to have a disease. Come on. One of you is infested with something. There we go. It was Bruinor Battlehammer. Still having, uh, still having a little bit of uh, griping in the guts. It's, it's actually just irritable bowel syndrome. Brunor has irritable bowel syndrome, but we got to get rid of it because not for the sake of Brunor, he's kind of accustomed to it, but it's the rest of the team, really, who uh, just can't abide the foulness of Brunor's intestinal funk anymore. His gut flora is just overpoweringly smelly, and uh, everyone starting to complain. It's really, this. it's, it's this peace of mind issue for the rest of the team, not so much for Brunor himself. Weapon Tinker is shit. I don't really mind having Unquiet Mind locked in. Is there anything we want to lock in? Elder Chater's pretty good. Ruins Tactician is actually also pretty good. Let's lock that in. Elder, you know what? Actually, I like Elder Chater better. If we're going to lock one in, I would rather have Hatred of Eldritch than the extra damage. Because the, the, the Eldritch Hater gives you bonus damage and bonus stress relief. And speaking of stress relief, while we're on the subject, who needs some? Brienne has a little more stress than I would like, so... Yeah, there's no disadvantage to sending her in. What will you do? Pretty much anything. Oh, wait, you have Deviant Taste. You're not allowed to visit the brothel, and you will not pray for... Okay, so drinking is still cool, right, Brienne? Yeah. Brienne of Tarth is rebel drinking. It's cool, man. Let's go out drinking. Do some underage drinking. We can be rebels and be cool, too. Katniss needs it, but can't get it. Brunor kind of needs it, but can't get it. Hot Frog. All right, what will you do? You're God-feeling. You will only pray for stress relief. Well, you could... I mean, theoretically, you could pray in a sanitarium, but it's not going to help your stress. So let's get you into Transept. Get you sorted. Hot Frog, ready to go pray. I guess he's going to pray that he becomes a better musician. I mean, it seems like practicing would be uh, much more beneficial for you, Hop Frog. but I suppose you could try and pray the suck away. You can. I mean, you can try. I'm told it worked for Demi Lovato, but uh, that's that's a rumor at best. Anyway, I'm going to wrap things up if you enjoyed the episode after another successful run through the dungeon. And we did manage to make a positive amount of cash. We made like four grand there. Whoopee. 
Consider subscribing, drop a like down in the comment section, of course, as well. But we do post new episodes of Darkest Dungeon every Monday and Wednesday, Friday. So if you want to subscribe and catch them all, have at it. You know where the button is. Right now, however, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.